Hello and thank you for watching this presentation. My name is Max Krüger and I will give you a short overview of our paper. And even though I appear alone in this video, I have written it together with my colleagues Anne Weibert from Germany, Deborah de Castrolea from Brazil, Dave Randall from the UK and Volker Wolf from Germany. And all of us work at the University of Siegen in Germany. So as you can guess from the title, this paper deals with the sustainability of collaborative or participatory design projects that develop systems or applications to support social change. But what happens when such a project ends? How are we going to make sure that the system we developed can continue to be used in the future? With our paper, we try to address this question. To do this, we report on our own research and design project, in which we tried to make it easier for forced and precarious migrants in Germany to make themselves at home in this new country and overcome the various and often severe hurdles that they face in this process. So for three years, we have worked in two cities in Germany on co-designing digital tools. For this, we collaborated with forced migrants as well as their voluntary and professional supporters. The tools we developed together address issues ranging from difficulties of finding suitable local language classes, finding work or opportunities to continue one's education, or accessing healthcare. In both locations, the tools are used regularly, but in different ways. The funding for the project ended in October 2019, as I said, after three years. And with that also ended our, our availability to engage in the project in a more or less full-time capacity, as we had been doing until that moment. But since then, these tools have been maintained in both cities by a mixture of voluntary and professional efforts with only minimal involvement of ourselves and are kept usable. Um, so, yeah, we are obviously very happy about this outcome. But how did this happen? So to find an answer, we draw on a lot of literature from within HCI, but also on um, feminist conceptualizations of care, as expressed by Johan Tronto or Maria Puig de la Bella Casa. Our paper basically gives three answers to the question. One is that we managed to expand pre-existing care. On the slide right now, you see an often cited definition of care uh, offered by Joan Tronto and her colleague Bernice Fischer, which we think very well describes what we observed in the volunteers and professional supporters that we worked with, who are the most important actors for the ongoing maintenance. These collaborators clearly cared for forced migrants and the challenges that they face. For some, it was a lifelong commitment. For some, it was highly ideologically motivated, for others more professionally. And it involved a large variety of activities, such as giving advice or accompanying people to administrative offices, translating letters, or just being friends, having dinner together. So in our project, we build on this existing care, finding ways to incorporate the different forms of care into the project. The tools we develop support the activities of the supporters, and because they care about people and the difficulties they face, this care then expanded to the tools and the maintenance of these tools. The project became what Bella Casa, put, uh, Bella Casa calls a matter of care, and our collaborators felt ownership and a sense of responsibility for the becoming of these tools. As I said, we have uh, several other uh, answers. Another crucial aspect is the openness um, to include social complexity and a continuously evolving act, um, yeah, cast of, of actors into the project, as well as flexibility regarding the activities and goals of the project, which were adapted as the project evolved. To know more, you would have to read the paper. I'd like to close by pointing out some limitations, though. And one is that even though care was crucial for our project and for the maintenance, it is not unproblematic. It creates hierarchies and sometimes even something that could be characterized as oppression, as other authors, authors have also mentioned. We write in more detail about that elsewhere, but for the sake of this paper, this is one of the several reasons for why migrants are only minimally involved in the continued maintenance of the tools, even if they were crucial and close participants. The other thing I'd like to highlight is that the ongoing maintenance of our tool is obviously great, but it in reality is only a tiny element of social change that our project aimed for, for overcoming the injustices, uh, injustices forced migrants face in Germany. What is needed in our view for this is more of the crucial care work our collaborators engage in, as well as political change in the EU and its member states to facilitate migration rather than trying so hard to prevent it. Our contribution in this sense can only be a tiny one. Thank you for listening.